Hello everybody, this is Joe from IST Group and today I'll be starting a very short series of videos around building a new WiseJ.net application completely from scratch. What I'm going to demonstrate here is uh, meant to be a boilerplate to give you an idea of how to start your first WiseJ.net application, uh, which is built using what you see is what you get graphical designer. Uh, together with plain C sharp code and uh, get an application that runs in a standard browser. The demo application, also the libraries that I wrote, are not meant to be used in production code. Uh, after all, it's just a demo and you may or you may not like the code that I wrote. If you like it, you're free to use it without paying any, ro paying all, any royalties or mentioning copyrights. You're not allowed to sell my code as a standalone product, uh, but you can use it in your products as, as you, uh, the way you like. And if you don't like my code, I'm fine with that too. In this case, go ahead and do whatever fits your needs best. Okay, what you see here is a Visual Studio solution with three projects. Uh, YSJLib is a collection of classes that are used in a demo app. Uh, from what I know, almost everybody has his collection of helper methods and helper classes that make, uh, make life easier, and I'm no exception to this rule. Because the list of classes is a little bit too long to explain each and every method, I will go give only um, a brief introduction about what each class does. The way everything is implemented is quite easy to understand because I'm no fan of super duper code that uses every fancy language feature. I come from a background of writing business applications and I designed a lot of business processes. Employing the latest innovations and language features has never been on the top of my list because the business applications had to be maintained over years. I had to understand the code quickly when I had to revisit certain parts that I had not touched for years. And it's not always easy to remember what you thought initially. And developers had to understand code that was written by somebody else. And the easier it is to understand, the, um, and the easier it is to understand code, the less risky it is to hide nasty bugs. These are strong arguments to keep the code as simple and straightforward as possible, and I used to stick to this paradigm for all my programming career. Okay, so let's start with the command handler class. This class associates a button or a menu item with an enabling function and also an execution function. Buttons and menu items are hooked up with the click event handlers and the associated execution functions are invoked automatically when the button or menu item is clicked. But if it is allowed to be executed or not depends on the current state of the application. For example, a save button should be disabled as long as the data is not modified. Command handler automatically takes care of it, enabling and disabling all registered buttons and menu items. On every idle event, the command handler checks all the buttons and menu items if they are currently available. Oh, and it works for buttons from the tools collection as well. Lately, YSJ.net has a command class integrated, but this library was made before YSJ.net introduced its command class. So I continue, continue to use my version. Never change a running system, they say. We also have the data binder class. The data binder class is a class that I wrote lately to overcome a problem that I couldn't solve. Since YSJ.NET comes with the binding source component, I wanted to use it, um, that component uh, for binding controls to data in my demo app application, but that failed when binding a nullable daytime property to a daytime picker uh, class because it was not possible to empty the entry field. Although uh, the um, associated daytime uh, property was uh, nullable. The problem is that binding source adds a line of code to the form's designer.cs file, but that does not provide the correct default value. While all other data bindings work nicely, I decided to look into data binding myself, and the 
the result was that I came up with my data binder class that is meant to be used with entry forms that contain a bunch of controls that have to be bound to data properties. By the way, um, using the binding source is kind of cumbersome anyway, because when you have to when you have an entry dialog with a lot of controls, it is hell of a lot of clicks to bind each field uh, in the property inspector. I always hated that, and, I, and it was another good motivation to make my life easier. The way data binder works is that it gets told what type that bound data class has. Then it loops over all controls on a form, compares the name of the control with the names of the data class properties. And if it finds a matching pair, it registers uh, an asso in association and hooks up the validating event handler of the control. In the event, um, the data binder writes the value of the control to the associated uh, property. Because all model classes are derived from DB entity, and DB entity implements the I property changed event, uh, the data binder class can also write the property's value back to the control if the property changed. In other words, data is transferred between control and property back and forth, and that's what a data binding class is supposed to do. The details can uh, become a little more complicated, for example, when string content from a text box has to be written to an integer property and vice versa. However, the data binder class handles this for you. So let's scroll uh, a little bit through it. Uh, we have the data binder constructor, which just, just uh, stores the form that it's residing on. The type that you uh, give the data binder is the type of the model class that you want to bind to the controls. Then uh, you can set the data source property and what it does, it calls auto discover and auto discover loops over all controls on the forms and registers the control. So the register function is called and uh, the register function associates the control with the property. We also have event handlers for validating and data property changed. It takes care of transferring the data back and forth between control and uh, model class. Okay, we will see how this is used later when uh, we start the data, um, the demo app application. Let's leave it as it is for now. The next class in the line is date utils. The date utils class is just a helper with methods that are once needed in one of my applications. It handles calculating Easter date, handles beginning and end of week, month, quarters, years, and it also calculates the number of years between dates. Nothing fancy here. The DB class is the shortest in the list. It simply provides a connection to a database. At first you want to set the con connection string and after that you can use the connection property to get a database con connection. That's all. All databases are different in their connection strings and in their implementation, implementation of um, the SQL language. Because I'm an old school developer that, I, um, that is used to write SQL statements, I didn't go through the hassle of employing um, enterprise, uh, enterprise framework. I use Dapper, which is a lightning fast ORM and I write SQL statements. In this short series of videos, I will use SQLite 3 as the database and WiseJLib assumes that SQLite is the database that it's working on. However, there are also um, two SQL Server related classes in this library, which are DB Schema and DB Sequence. I left the classes in here, although they are not used in the demo application, and I will not cover them in this video. The next one is the DB annotation. DB annotation defines a few attribute classes that are necessary to automatically create SQL statements. More on this, on this uh, later. The DB entity class um, is the mother of all database classes. Every data class must be derived from DB entity because it provides some important properties and methods that are used for reading and storing data. DB entity contains row ID, which is here. 
The DB entity contains a row ID, which is an integer, and it serves as the primary key in each and every data table. Row ID is supposed to have unique values. of It's a primary key, so it has to be unique. DB entity de implements the iNotify property change interface, and changes to uh, data will be propagated to the bound controls. Another important feature of the DB entity is that it is, able, it is able to generate SQL statements for insert, update, and delete, which in turn makes it possible to save data to the database by simply calling DB entity's save changes method. Okay, as I already mentioned, um, the DB schema and DB sequence um, classes are related to Microsoft SQL Server databases and they are not covered in this video. Encryption is a class that uses system security cryptography uh, to encrypt and decrypt strings. I use it to start, store passwords in the database in their en encrypted form. And the class also provides a simple method to generate random passwords. The extensions uh, class the extensions class uh, contains a bunch of methods that are designed as extensions, so they all have the, this uh, keyword. I don't want to bore you explaining all the methods, just go ahead and look at everything yourself. The code is fairly simple. Sa same of the methods are related to German topics like is valid IBAN, is valid phone number, expand German umlauts. I'm German, I live in Germany, and I wrote applications for uh, German companies. That's why these methods are here. If you don't need them, you can simply ignore these. The grid extender class is next on the list. The grid extender is another class that was born because I wrote the same code over and over again and decided to solve that once for an, and forever. Uh, the class extends the data grid view control which methods uh, um, with methods to set my preferred default property, property values, collect values from selected cells and some other stuff. A little specialty is loading and saving the state of columns to a special table in the database. This is kind of hard-coded. Uh, feel free to change um, the code and make it more universal. For now my code is enough to store the order and visibility of data grid view columns and restore it again. The structure of the database table can be inspected uh, from the uh, demo app database. Holiday table. There we go. Holiday table is another class that only applies to Germany because it calculates the official uh, holidays that are regulated by local law. If you're not in Germany, you can simply ignore, ignore this class, but if you need to calculate holidays, you create the class with a year, and it will contain all fixed and variable holidays of that year. Each holiday contains its name, a date, and uh, the German states uh, where um, the holiday applies. Okay, let's continue with the list binder class. The list binder class was developed because, I wa uh, because when implementing dialogues to edit data, I used to write the same uh, type of code over and over again, so I generalized it and put it into a separate class that I can use everywhere. The list binder class contains a binding source and a deleted items list, together with methods to add, change, or delete items in these lists. The list binder class is typically, typically uh, passed to, as a parameter to a dialog. The dialog displays the rows from the binding source. The user adds, changes, and deletes rows. And at the end, the dialog is closed and closed. And the calling method invokes listbinder.savechanges to save all the changes that have been made in the dialog. When the user deletes a row from the data grid view, the item goes into the deleted items list so that the safe changes knows which items to delete. The list binder class is used in the demo app where you can see it in action. The utils class is the next one on the list.
the utils class contains a couple of things that don't fit in any other of the library classes. This is, for example, creating a German IBAN number, uh, looping rec recursively through all controls on a form, cloning an instance of a class. It also provides a couple of message boxes that can pass the message and split it into dialogue caption, title, and actual message, all separated by, separated by the pipe symbol. It's kind of a flexible way of displaying message boxes with nice and structured and good look looking text. The validator class is a class that contains methods which raise an exception if a certain condition is not met. For example, calling check not empty and passing a control whose text property is empty will focus the control and raise an exception. Most of the methods are over, have overloads, so you can pass a text value or a control, whatever suits your needs better. For, me, for more details, you might want to inspect the code. I know there are other ways to validate entry fields, but this is mine. So uh, if you like it, you can use it. If not, use whatever you like better. Where Builder is uh, Where Builder is another class that was born because I wrote the same code over and over again. It's um, basically a string builder that properly concatenates a bunch of SQL where conditions into a single where clause. As I said, I use the Depper ORM, which requires you to write SQL statements, and SQL statements usually have a where clause. If a where clause consists of more than one condition, the conditions have all, um, they have to be concatenated with AND and OR. Where Builder makes uh, adding condition after condition easier. It also provides a method where you can pass two dates and it will create a SQL between clause and also return the dynamic parameters needed for the execution of the query with uh, Dapper. You will see what I mean when it comes to the demo app. Okay, that's uh, basically it for the YSJ lib library. The code will be uploaded to GitHub. I will put a link into the description. The next video will be about the actual business uh, application and uh, it will show how to handle a login dialog and how to manage a list of user users. Another part of this short uh, series will be Schematics, uh, which is a WinForms application that reads the SQLite database and creates SQL statements and data classes on the fly uh, by examining the schema of the database. Okay, so that's uh, it for today. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.